Welcome to Petra, one of the most impressive ancient cities in the world. Yes, you've probably seen pictures of the famous treasury, but this world wonder is way more than that. Surprisingly, it's the size of 50,000 football fields and has been in countless Hollywood blockbusters like Indiana Jones and the Transformers. Filled with over a thousand tombs, endless slot canyons, and a whole city carved out of stone, you can see why millions flock here every single year. Hey guys, welcome back to the other side. We are Ian and Anna, and today we're gonna be exploring Petra Jordan. It's mind blowing that we are actually here right now. It's really cold, guys. It's about 36 degrees Fahrenheit. We didn't bring winter coats, so I am wearing layers, and I'll probably take them off to get some cute shots for y'all. We are about to head into this little canyon that will lead to the opening of that treasury. This seek, or you can call it a slot canyon, is exactly like the one that we saw in Antelope Canyon in the state of Utah back at home. This is all created by wind and rain throughout thousands of years, and it's just winding canyons all the way through. Before you even land in Jordan, make sure to buy the Jordan Pass. This takes care of your visa. It also takes care of your entry to Petra and so many different sites all over Jordan. It was 75 JOD per person for two entries to Petra. We didn't know that the Jordan Pass included visa, so we accidentally paid for it on arrival. Which was expensive. It was expensive. How much was it? I think it was 40 JOD. So the biggest tip is get the Jordan Pass before you arrive, because you can't get it at the airport. Even if you have a Jordan Pass, you still have to wait in the ticket office line and that doesn't open till 6 30 in the morning while Petra itself opens at 6. So we get here at 6 thinking we can go in and then we had to wait 30 minutes. The good news is once you get your two-day pass like tomorrow when we come we can just go right in at 6. Oh my god it's so cool. This is wild. It's one of those things that you've seen a million times on the internet and somehow it still blows you away when you're in person. For those of you that have not done any research, what is Petra? Well, this is one of the oldest cities in the world. It dates back to 400 BC. Petra has been called the Rose City because of the color of the rocks and also the Lost City because it took a long time to discover. Treasury actually represents a calendar. If you can see 12 pillars, that represents 12 months out of the year. Then on the rim right there, there are seven glass glasses of wine that shows that there's seven days in the week and finally there are 31 flowers which represents how many days in a month. When you get to Petra there's gonna be some locals here trying to take you on these kind of sketchy tours up to viewpoints. Be careful especially if you're a family or have kids but right now as you can see tour guide taking us up so we can get a better viewpoint. There's another viewpoint way up there and maybe we'll do that tomorrow when we come in the morning. Cheers, man, to Petra. I'm so cold I'm out of it. We're hanging out with Gassan right now. He makes tea up here. He's letting me wear his Bedouin coat. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I might like create something like this for girls to change in easily. By the way, it's good congratulations for you. Oh, for thank the you so much. engagements. Oh, thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> We're saying Arabic Mabruk. Mabruk, Anna. Mabruk. Wood, wood. Right over here is this epic viewpoint and then there's carpets over here to take videos or photos. Give them a little tip. You're good to go. We just got charged 10 JOD each. It ran us about $29 total. It was literally a five minute hike which is absolutely ridiculous. You're able to bargain so don't just take their first offer. It's the easiest trail. Do not try to go up alone. They're gonna freak out on you. Ian took a video of that and uh, then they try to get us to delete the video. But we gotta hook you guys up with that kind of footage. So here it is. This lost city used to belong to the Nabataeans. The Greeks used to come here and try to take it over, but because of the way these narrow canyons are formed, it was great protection. Once the Romans came around, they were able to take over the city. 
The Nabataeans used a very unique method by carving buildings like the treasury from the top down. They began by climbing to the top of a cliff to cut a narrow ledge into the cliff face. Then, using ancient drills, they fixed pins below the ledge and laid planks across to finally begin carving. About halfway down, there was enough sandstone debris that it created a natural ramp to finish the rest off. And I found the sun. <laughs> Let me tell you, our hands have been numb this whole time. It is late March right now, so if you're coming in this time range, make sure to pack a lot of warm clothes. In Egypt, it was really windy, and I'm glad Jordan there's no wind at all. Guys, we just had to get out of there. The people are so persistent and I know they need to make money. They come up to you every five seconds, so I'm happy this little narrow way no one's bothering us. I just like to enjoy my life and not be bothered. Athletic Greens is the sponsor of this video. As travel vloggers, we have a lack of consistency in our routine. This is the one thing that we actually do do every day is drink our AG1. It has a ton of vitamins, minerals, probiotics, antioxidants. It's just a one-stop shop for good health. That way you don't have to take multivitamins and other pills. It also contains a natural form of B12, which we lack in our day-to-day -day diet since we're vegetarians. If you are vegan or vegetarian, you might want to check this out. Our energy was boosted, our focus was better, and we were sleeping better. You take one scoop with eight ounces of water in the morning. Athletic Greens has been working on AG1 for over a decade to get it right. If you guys want to sign up through the link in the description below, Athletic Greens is going to give you guys one full year of vitamin D for free plus five travel packets, but now let's head back to Petra. Jordan in general is one of the most water scarce countries in the entire world. Getting water in a place like this, a desert, nearly impossible. So for them to be able to grow crops and do that all way back when is just astonishing. The water system here supported more than 30,000 Nabataeans that called this place home. It was made up of 36 dams protecting the city from flash floods, 100 reservoirs to collect and hold rainwater, and 125 miles of pipeline connecting all these features together. It was so well done that they even had a 140 foot public swimming pool in the Royal Garden. Greeks, Romans, Syrians, Egyptians, and migrants from all over the region would come here and enjoy what Persians called a paradise, a place considered to be heaven on earth. So the walk to the monastery from the treasury is already amazing. It's been like 10 steps. Before we do that, I need to talk to you guys about animal riding. We've been saying this throughout our videos, um, especially in Egypt. A long time ago, people owned donkeys, horses, camels to obviously help them with whatever they needed help with. However, it's different now because they're being used for tourism and they're being forced to do stuff all day, abused. It's really bad and I just encourage you to not ride any animals in any country. In a lot of cases around the world, you're also enabling child labor. We couldn't walk in Petra without kids on donkeys begging us for rides the entire time. Sadly, we even saw the children abusing the animals even more harshly than the adults. Don't ride elephants in Thailand. Elephants are not meant to be ridden. Same thing with camels in Egypt. They're abused. It's just one of those things. Just don't do it. because there's nobody around. You'll see it as you walk to the monastery, turn around on your way, you'll see all these tombs and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. We're 15 minutes into the staircase hike. I must be out of shape or something. It's definitely a bit challenging. <laughs> We made it to the monastery, about an hour and 10 minute walk up massive stairs. Right now, we are sitting, getting some orange juice, and we have an amazing view of the monastery. This is kind of like my favorite part, because we get to relax, take it all in. What is life right now? <sighs> Hummus pitas for the way. The biggest difference between the monastery and the treasury other than their purposes. This one is way bigger but has much less detail. The treasury had more beautiful carvings in it. So when you're up near the monastery, there's so many different viewpoints. Crazy how expansive these deserts are and I can imagine why the Greeks couldn't take over. It would be so hard going through these canyons, having to fight the Nabataeans. You can go hiking. There's so many different trails. I even see people with their hiking poles. It's a really adventurous place, not just a picturesque spot, which we we are loving. Here's a big thank you to all of you that have been supporting us. I cannot believe we've made it to our first World Wonder together. One of seven. As you know, we have a woot woot book. It's gonna take us all over the world. And we just want you guys along for the journey. We appreciate you. We love when you leave us comments. Follow us on Instagram for more direct messages and following our day to day. Some tips if you are coming here, budget your time. It's a very full day activity unless you just stay in one spot. A lot of people start on this side, which is the 
monastery side and then they work their way to the treasury side and that way you don't have to go up the stairs. We are doing here and back and that's why it's taking us so long. I'm officially dead. We've been walking since 5 a.m. and it's now 1 p.m. I could never do it in the heat. I'm really glad we came up this time. Even though it was a little cold in the morning, I'm thankful now. Let's go falafel, come on. Falafel, falafel, falafel. falafel. We're here at Mr. Falafel. We've been eating here every single day. We are about to show you the best Middle Eastern food, especially that you could find here in Wadi Musa, where Petra is located. If you don't already know, Ian's mom and my mom are both 50% Lebanese, making us each 25% Lebanese. We grew up eating all the Middle Eastern food that you can imagine, and it's like probably one of our favorite cuisines. It has all arrived. Anna, what do we got here? Hummus falafel, which I'm sure everyone already knows. And then this is mutabla, kind of like a baba ganoush, but they also put yogurt in it. So it's got a few more ingredients than baba ganoush, and it's way better. This is definitely my favorite dish. There's so much flavor in this. I know, it's just exciting on our palate because we always have lemons. This city is such a vibe. The sun sets right over these incredibly full mountains and the city just kind of surrounds you. Definitely more than I expected. If any of you have ever watched Friends, foosball time. When it comes to Ian, I'm competitive. I don't care about anyone else in the world. I had an older brother and he beat me at everything and Ian beats me at everything. So any chance are good. I try my hardest. All right, here we go. Ball and play. Oh, oh no! Comment down below if you had an older brother that beat you at everything or can relate to that in any way. The next morning, we got up bright and early and entered Petra at 6 a.m. For those of you that don't know, I asked Anna to marry me in Santorini in 2021, and our wedding is this year on October 8th. We had a really fun idea for our save the dates, so we used our own tripod and took engagement photos in front of the treasury. And here's how our plane ticket save the dates turned out. Wild. Oh my god, I'm like kind of scared. I love the hiking here. It is so much fun. That cliff was actually pretty hard to climb up. Way down there, you see all the people. That is where the treasury is. We're coming up this narrow canyon and we are climbing all the way up. Right down here is a view of the treasury. Wow, this is so epic actually. I think it's worth paying for a guide, especially this one, because um, I don't think I would have been able to come up that mountain, like figuring out which steps to go. You know, they know it so well and they help you. Sorry, I'm talking a little weird. I think my face is a bit numb. Is this what Botox feels like? I feel like I'd be way more mind blown about this stuff if we hadn't already gone to Cappadocia and seen all the caves there. What's so cool about the caves in the mountain is it keeps a good temperature so it doesn't get too cold or too too hot. Yeah, we got invited to a cave sleepover. But like I said, if you ever go to Cappadocia, you can do this too. And it is really, really incredible. And that is a wrap on Petra. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and got a ton of value out of it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and of course, subscribe. Coming up next is Wadi Rum and a whole 10 day road trip throughout Jordan. So get excited for that one. You can check out our Egypt and Jordan playlist right up here.